lads before we get into today's match reaction make sure you are subscribed and any favorites any of you who watch my videos or still not subscribed so if you are a new viewer and you like my content make sure you are subscribed make sure you like the video as well it really does help and support the channel make sure you click the bell as well so you can notify when they upload new videos so enjoy today's match reaction liverpool nil man united nil match reaction what a result there lads what a bloody brilliant result for united there and i'll tell you what here overall i was happy with that performance as well like how did liverpool not score in that game 34 shots you know eight in target i think something like that probably even more in target being honest like the amount of brilliant chances they had and yet they still go away with zero goals their name and two points dropped is honestly shocking like i mean liverpool in this game sure they dominated the game overall but they were very very poor like in front of goal but overall like our defensively for us we were phenomenal i thought it was a good performance from us in this one you know very very shaky first half very shaky start but as the game did progress we started to look better and better uh, throughout the game and I mean, I would say, although we're lucky not to lose that game, of course, I also say we're unlucky not to win that game because overall, I think the overall the quality of the chances that were had from the both sides, United had the better chances. Like, I mean, Hoyland, he'd been down for a chance like that for three or four months in the Premier League. He finally gets that chance and he scuffs his lines, of course. I mean, I mean, honestly, like, I'm, honestly, I don't really know what to say about that. I mean, it's just unlucky in the end from Hoyland there. But, you know, we can't become too greedy here. In the end of the day, we still were poor. I bet in this one, Liverpool still definitely were the better side, albeit they still were poor. But, look, you know, definitely 100% happy with a 0-0 draw in this one. And let's hope then that over the next couple of games, we can build in that draw. So, without wasting too much more time here, let's jump into our player rating. Starting out in Nets, Andrea Onana. It was a strange enough game for Onana, if I'm being honest. Like, I mean, on one hand, like, his distribution, I thought, half the time was excellent and some of the passes forward were phenomenal but the other half of the time he kicked a bit of the light of play like some of the some of the passes he made from kick out sake and just in general like were very very poor however on the other hand some of the passes he made were also phenomenal and exceptional especially helping us go forward and uh, start a counter attack and I mean, like, he still, although he still, still did look a bit shaky, you know, he made eight saves in this game. Eight saves. If it wasn't for him, Liverpool probably still would have destroyed us in this match, even though they were pretty poor. So I'm going to give him a seven in this one. And overall, he was still was very, very good in this match. However, he was a bit shaky at times, you know, uh, completed the ball out of play a good few times as well. So it definitely wasn't his best performance. However, it still wasn't too bad from Romana in this one, definitely. Made eight saves, capped us in the game overall. So yeah, really couple of complaints here and there for the Cameroonian but overall it still was a decent enough performance from Monana so I think a fair enough rating is deserved hence why I've given him a 7 in this one so Andre Onana then can have a 7 for me at left back then Luke Shaw can have an 8 he was, Luke Shaw was phenomenal he was our best player I thought in this match definitely I mean where was Salah in that match Salah nowhere to be seen I'll tell you where he was in Luke Shaw's back pocket the job Shaw did in Salah was phenomenal it was unbelievably good like and what I tell you about like Salah a player who has a very very good history against United barely got a sniff in this game he barely got a sniff I barely seen him at all in this one so I mean Luke Shaw overall offensively very very good he also looks very very good going forward as well I mean definitely I probably would say he was our best player in this one like I thought he was just from minute one to minute 90 even in the first half when nearly all our players were struggling Luke Shaw still was playing very very good so really no complaints at all from Luke Shaw I still I, I thought he was our best player in this one and overall lads I think he is definitely a fair enough rating for Shaw still did make one or two mistakes here and there however overall he had Salah in his back pocket and was very solid defensively and very good going forward as well so Luke Shaw can have an 8 from me I thought he was very very solid in this one let's hope for more performances like that because I tell you what if Luke Shaw can perform like that on a daily basis or a week or on a weekly basis should I say and I tell you what we definitely are very very safe at the left back position so Luke Shaw then can have an 8 from me all right back then Diogo Dallo is going to get a 7 I thought overall Dallo was very very good you know he made a couple of mistakes just like Luke Shaw a bit more than Luke Shaw however you know going forward he still look, they still did look good at times and defensively as well he was also pretty good like I mean the one of some amazing last uh, tackles made there however did get sent off in the end which I thought was an absolute disgrace like Michael Oliver was basically trying to gift Liverpool the win in that one you know amount of decisions that went their way especially in injury time trying to trying his best to get Liverpool to win in that one however he did fail that was a disgraceful red card there hope United does appeal it and Dallow 
as uh, a, 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 he is available for the next game because it's not a red card. Like, well, what, for punching the air a couple of times? It's a joke, honestly. Nunes did the exact same, but 10 times worse. I mean, in the first half, Nunes should have been sent off. Nunes is a wee rat. He's a disgrace, like, elbows into Johnny Evans' ribs, boots the ball away, and then is mocking the ref, shouting at him, like, and yet he only gets a yellow card from that. Dalo gets two, uh, two yellow cards, which end up being a red card from punching the air a few times. Like, talk about double standards, like, but overall, Dalo in this one, I still did think was very, very solid. Still, still did make a couple of mistakes here and there. However, overall, I was happy enough with how he played. So that's why I've given the Portuguese a, five, a seven in this one. Let's hope for more performances like that. And let's hope that Dalo can, get, can, can finally get back in the good form. So Dalo then can have a seven for me. Rafael Varane then can have an eight for me. Varane came back into the team after being kicked out of it for Ten Hag. He had a point to prove, and he definitely very well proved that point. He was excellent in this one, the Frenchman. Barely put a foot wrong. Like His leadership at the back was phenomenal. Very, very solid. Like Limited Liverpool so much. to made some very good last-ditch defending, and some last-ditch tackles amazingly. And overall, lads, no real complaints at all from Varane in this one. He was one of our best players up there with Luke Shaw as one of our best players in this one. Well, very happy with the Frenchman in this one. Let's hope now we can see him playing a lot more often and let's hope then we can keep him and let's hope that he doesn't leave in January because the Frenchman still is a very very solid centre back to have and if we can keep him fit then he definitely will be a very very good servant for us at least at the end of the season so Raphael Varane can have an 8 for me very very happy with how the Frenchman did and also Johnny Evans can have an 8 as well now Johnny Evans was a warrior in this one he fought through a couple one or two bad challenges on him like which I mean Nunes of course elbows in the ribs like he fought on from that he was very very good overall um you know, many people are saying, like, making jokes about Johnny Evans playing for United, but no matter of fact, like, Johnny Evans is a very, very solid centre back. He's barely put a front wrong for United and all the chances and games he does get. Like, overall, Johnny Evans is one of the best players in this pitch in this one. Like, I mean, lim just like Varane, very, very solid. Limited Liverpool a lot in this one. And overall, like, Johnny Evans just, just, just like Varane, barely put a front wrong in this one. And that's all I really have to say here. Very, very solid at the back. Let's hope then for more performances like that from Johnny Evans. Evans over the next few games. So Johnny Evans, just like Raphael Varane then, can have a hit for me. Once again, he was very, very phenomenal in this one. First midfielder then was Sofian Amrabat, and I'm going to give Amrabat a three in this one, lads. Now, I know many people may be giving him five or sixes. I thought he was shit, that, diabolical in this one, the Moroccan. You know, the amount, how many passes did Amrabat misplace? Like, he was terrible in this game, I thought. Like, he, sure, in the second half, he didn't prove a lot. However, overall in this match, he was terrible, especially in the first half. Shocking, like, every time he got the ball, every time he got the ball, he just gave it away. I cannot recall any time where Amrabat actually did uh, give the ball to the United player in the first half at least. Uh, overall, like I was shocked by Aaron Bass' performance in this one. And yeah, I didn't want him to start because I knew he'd muck up plenty of times if he did start. Well, what did he do? He mucked up plenty of times. So, I mean, overall, like, Amrabat was very, very disappointed in how he played in this one. But, look at, you know, the Moroccans just going to have to move on from this one. Did improve a bit in the second half. Whoever still was very, very poor in this one. And, well, then, let's hope for the next game. Amrabat does improve in this performance because, tell you what, surely he can't get much worse than how he played in this one. So, Amrabat then can have a three for me. I thought, overall, the Moroccan was shocking in the field in this one. Kobe Manu got the start again, and Manu's getting a seven. Kobe Manu ran that midfield like he bullied Liverpool's midfield of Endo, Gravenberch, Shabashley, Curtis Jones, Harvey Elliott. Like, I mean, Kobe Manu ran that midfield like I thought. Now, maybe run at mid maybe run at midfield could be a bit of an over exaggeration because Liverpool were the dominant side, obviously. But for Kobe Manu, uh, only an 18 year old, to come into that game and put it up against the likes of Shabashley and um, Endo and Gravenberch. Curtis Jones, for example, uh, throughout that game, like for an eighteen year old, I think that's incredible. Like, and he's had three very tricky uh, first Premier League matches at Goodison Park, St James's Park, and Anfield. Three very hostile atmospheres. Maybe not Liverpool hostile atmosphere. Like, so I mean, maybe it probably was a bit easier than the other two games. However, still it was not, it was still a tough place to go to. Like, and Manu still did not not even look out of place at all in this one. Once again, I think Manu needs to be a nail down starter very very soon in this team because he has the talent there. He's consistently putting in good performances and the chances he does get and I tell you what lads if he keeps this up and if he keeps going he does, if he doesn't let the hype get to him and he keeps on going putting these consistent performances in week in week out for a season upon season and I tell you what here he is a legend in the making and a future Man United legend in my opinion so 
Kobe Manu gets a seven for me. Overall, very happy with how he played in this one. Let's hope he keeps his feet on the ground, and let's hope then he shoulders on and plays just as good over the next coming games that he does get on in. And the final midfielder then is Scott McTominay. Got the captain's armband in this one and got it in a five. Like I mean, if he came just like Amrabat, came into the game a wee bit more in the second half, helped us going forward at times as well. However, I thought overall McTominay ghosted in this one. He was poor. Like, I mean, he really didn't do much good in this one. And we gave the ball away a good few times. Didn't really see him do much. And we did get chances, though. He was pretty um instrumental in them, like, which is good to see. Once again, like, he was playing on the attacking midfielder role. And I think going forward, he, you know, he helped us a lot more in that more attacking role. But, I mean, overall, he just didn't do enough in this game. Like, well, we need to see McTominay more involved in games. Because I know, obviously, he's a lot more better going forward. Uh, rather than defending, however, I mean, I still, still not just seeing good performance from him. Like, he probably was one of our worst players in this one, and well, I just wasn't happy with how he played in this one, really didn't do anything. So, Scott McCominick and a fight for me, and then overall, the Scotsman was poor in this one. So, yeah, then let's hope then for the next game he gets his feet back on the ground and puts in a better performance from what we've seen today. So, Scott McCominick then can have a fight for me. Starting at the attack then with Alejandro Granacho on the left wing, Granacho's getting a four from me. I thought overall, Granacho really didn't do much in this one. Trent Alexander Arnold really had him figured out. I think it was a tough enough match for Granacho. In the end, like he worked hard, which is good to see. Like, and I still do have faith that he can get through this game. He can't bounce back in the next one. However, still just wasn't happening for him in this one. Like, I mean, understandable. I mean, he, I mean, he's probably not fully experienced to have a brilliant match in um a well on field against Liverpool. Like, so I mean, overall, like I, I cannot uh, ridicule. His uh, effort in this one, he still did work really, really hard. However, overall in this one, didn't really do too much. So, we're actually going to have a four for me in this one. I was hoping the next game he can perform a wee bit better than he did in this one at Anfield. On the right wing then, Anthony, I'm going to give a six now. Just like Garnacho, Anthony worked hard. And at times, you know, he did milk up like he did. Give the ball away cheaply a good few times. And, you know, wasted our attacks every now and again. However, on the other hand, some amazing uh, bits of play. Like, some amazing skill. Some amazing passes, some amazing um, you know, uh, runs going forward, like and of course good tricks as well. And overall, like he showed passion and aggression, like not taking any crap from that Simicast, like he's not taking any crap at all from the great left back. And overall, I was very happy to see that from the Brazilian. At least he had passion, he cared for the badge, fought for the badge in this one. Really good to see in this one. And Anthony continues to look a lot better than he has been looking over the past few months. And I'm telling you, lads, I'm telling you, Anthony's finally coming around for us. And if you can keep this up over the next couple of coming weeks and months, then I tell you what, Anthony Daphne still has the potential of turning into a very, very good winger for us here at United. So Anthony then gets a six for me. Overall, he worked really, really hard. Still didn't make a good few mistakes, however. Still did look very, very good at times as well. And overall, lads, I was very, very, I was happy enough with how he did in this one. Obviously, he could play a lot better than he did. However, in the end, we'll take a six in this one. I was hoping the next match then he can he can improve in that and uh, put in an even better performance. So Anthony then can have a six from me. Finally, up top, Rasmus Hoyland wouldn't give a five. Like I mean, just didn't really get the ball, which is you're gonna have to accept that. Like, cause obviously coming into this game, Ten Hag was gonna look to be defensive, which is respectable enough. He was going to leak the park the bus really, and that's what he did. And well, Hoyland's just not really going to get the ball in that. So, however, he still did try hard, just like the other attackers in this one. Like, he should have scored that chance, though. Really, really bummed he didn't score that chance. That definitely would have put us on course of winning this one. However, you know, it is what it is. Like, you know, he's just going to have to bounce back and go again in the next one. Overall, still did look okay in this one. However, didn't really do too much. So, Hoyland then going to have a five for me. Overall, didn't really do too much, and he should have scored that chance. However, we won't let him. We won't let that set him back, hopefully. And hopefully, in the next match, we'll finally see Hoyland get his first Premier League goal. So, Rosmond's Hoyland then can have a five for me. Ending off then, Rashford, Hannibal, and Palestri are the three subs. But it didn't really do too much in this one, so they're all going to get sixes. And that will end it as match reaction, everybody. I hope you enjoy it. Remember to like, share, and subscribe, and turn on notifications. Thank you all for supporting the channel once again. I really appreciate it. And see you all once again in KTFG very, very soon.